Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D bookshelf using Element 3D on After Effects. I'm going to show you how to make it completely from scratch from the basic shapes of Element 3D so we won't be downloading anything from CG Trader or Turbo Squid or anything like that. So the first thing you want to do is just create a solid layer and you want to add element to that. Now go to scene setup. First, we're going to create our bookshelf. So you want to press create and then press the cube. Most of the things that we're going to make today are just using the cube shape. First, you want to go down to size XYZ and you want to just decrease this first value. I would say maybe do about 0.2 to 0.3. Then you want to go to this middle value and increase that by maybe three or four. Now you just want to drag the red arrow, the X arrow, and just move it to the side a bit. Now duplicate that by clicking Command D, or if you're on Windows, it's Control D. You want to go to these arrows and you want to change this first value. So if there's a negative sign, then you want to delete the negative sign. If there isn't a negative sign, then you want to add a negative sign. So this shows us about how wide our bookshelf is going to be and I want it a little wider so I'm just going to increase this number a bit. Just make sure that if you increase one number, you want to make sure that it's the opposite number for the other shape, if that makes sense. So this is negative 1.5, this is positive 1.5. That way they're an equal distance from each other. Now you want to create another cube and this time you want to increase this first value up until it kind of meets these two bars. Now you want to decrease this Y value. Now you just want to duplicate this, hitting Command D again. And you want to go to these arrows and you want to change this middle value to 1. Now duplicate that and change this middle value to negative 1. You can increase or decrease the values according to your likings, but just make sure that they are opposite to each other. So again, negative 1 and positive 1. Now I'm just going to duplicate this again, and this time I'm going to make it negative 2. And first I'm just going to go back to this wrench and I'm going to increase this first value again just so that these corners meet up. Now I'm going to duplicate that and go back to the arrows and make this a positive 2. And there is your shelf. Now you want to add color to your shelf, so you can just delete one of these. Now you just want to hold shift and select every single shape that we've used so far and just drag this little sphere to one of them and it will apply it to all of them. Now you want to click on the sphere and this is what controls the color of the shelf. If you want to just make it a plain color then click this little circle and you can just change the color here. As you can see it changes the whole shelf. If you want to add a picture and make it look like a wooden shelf then click this picture here then click none set and you want to just go to google and search up wood texture i searched up specifically white wood but you can use like dark wood or like regular wood i don't know and you want to just save one of these pictures now come back to element and click load texture and just locate the picture that you downloaded and press ok and there you go now that we've got our shelf i'm just going to click this little folder and i'm just going to select all of these and I'm just going to drag that into the folder, that way it'll just stay organized. Now just right click and click rename, and I'm just going to name this shelf. Also if you want, you can add a back part to your shelf, so just create another cube. And you want to make it the same height as these bars on the side, so mine is 4. So I'm going to change this to 4 as well. Then you can just increase the X until it meets the ends, like that. Now you just want to decrease the Z value to about 0.1, it doesn't have to be super thick, and just drag it to the back using the Z arrow. And to make it the same color or texture as the rest of them, just drag the little sphere onto that box model. Now we can add some things onto our shelf. First I'm going to create a picture frame. First, just click back to your group folder and create a new folder. Then click this little blue square by the shelf to hide it. It's not going to delete it, it's just going to hide it so we can focus on the picture frame. Now I'm just going to create a cube again. And you want to just decrease the Z value by about maybe 0.1 to 0.2. So this is where our picture is going to go. To create the frame around it, you want to create this little ring. And where it says ring segments, you want to change that number to 4. Now go to these arrows, and you want to change this first value to 90, and change this value to 45. 
Now you can go back to the wrench and you can just increase the ring radius too. And to make your frame smaller, just decrease ring radius one. If you wanna make it smoother, then go to sides and just increase that number. Now to add a picture to this, you just want to press OK to get out of elements first. And you want to just import your picture to After Effects or if you already have pictures with edited backgrounds, that's fine too. Just make sure that the picture fits the composition like this and pre-compose it. Then just click this eye to hide it. Now go back to your elements layer and go to custom layers, custom texture maps, and just link the picture that you want to use. Now go back to scene setup and you want to click the cube since that's where the picture is going to go. Click this arrow, then click this and click none set, then click this arrow and click custom layer one. And it should be the picture that you linked. If your picture looks weird or stretched out, then click back to the cube and go to this checkerboard, click this and make sure it says UV. As for the frame, just click this arrow, go here and you can just change the color or add a picture to it like we did earlier. Now I'm going to add the backing for the picture frame. Just duplicate the box model. Then you want to right click this and click duplicate and replace. Now right click again and click reset. Now you just want to make this black and just drag the Z arrow slightly so that it covers up the picture like that. Now I'm just going to duplicate that box model and I'm going to drag the Z arrow even more. And you want to reduce the size of the first number and also reduce the middle number and also maybe the third. Now you want to go to these arrows and you want to just decrease this first value and just drag it down and push it towards the frame and as you can probably figure out this is kind of the stand behind it and once you're done I'm just going to rename my folder. Now I'm going to click this little square again to unhide the shelf and now you can just kind of place the picture frame wherever you want Now I'm going to create some albums to add to my shelf. So again, just hide these two and click back to the main group folder and add a new folder. And again, we're gonna create a cube. You wanna decrease this third value to about maybe 0.1 and just slightly increase this middle value so it's more of a rectangle. Now you just wanna go to Google and search for whatever album cover you want to use. So for example, I searched for BTS and just save that picture, of course. Now to add it to our box, just go here, then set, same thing we've been doing. You can leave it like this, but if you wanna place the album at an angle so that the spine will be shown like that, then you wanna duplicate this box model and you wanna just decrease this X value and you wanna just drag this X arrow so that it moves to the side like this. And I'm actually gonna reduce this even more so it's super thin like that. And click this arrow, right click this and click duplicate and replace. Then click reset and you wanna just change it to a color that'll match the album. So since mine is just white, I'm just gonna leave it white. Then you wanna just drag this X arrow until it's back into the spine and it covers it like this. Then just duplicate that and go to these arrows and make this a positive number or if it's not a positive, make it a negative. Same thing like we did earlier so that it would be on the opposite side. Again, once you're done, just rename the folder and just unhide these so you can place the album. If you wanna make multiple albums, then just duplicate the folder and you can hide the rest of these and focus on this again. And to change the picture and the color and all of that, just click the arrows on all of these and just click duplicate and replace, duplicate and replace, duplicate and replace. Now you can just replace the picture and replace the colors on the sides. And once you've got one side, you can just drag the color onto the other side like that. Now I'm going to add some Polaroids to my bookshelf. So again, closing out of element, you wanna just go to Google and search for Polaroid PNG and you can just download whichever one you find and just import that along with the picture you want in your Polaroid. Now to actually make the Polaroid, you wanna to go to layer, transform and then fit to comp height now you just want to increase the scale of the picture you're using then just pre-compose these together and you can just make as many of these as you want 
If your picture comes out of the frame like this, then just click this and create a mask like that. Once you've created all the Polaroids that you want, you want to click this square mask here. And you want to create a square mask on your Polaroid, just like that. Once you've got that mask, just click the mask and copy and paste that onto all of your other Polaroids. Then don't forget to hide your Polaroids. Now go back to your layer with element, then go to custom layers, custom text and mask, and just link one of your Polaroids. They all have the same mask, so it doesn't matter. Then go to custom texture mask and just link all of your Polaroids, or if you only had one, just link that one. But I had two, so I'm linking both of those. Then just go back to scene setup. Now you want to create an extrusion, and this should be the shape of the Polaroid. Now click this arrow and click this, go to the picture and click none set and just use the picture that you have for your Polaroid. If the picture is all weird like this, just go back to the model and make sure it says UV. Now you can just scale this down and place this wherever you want in your bookshelf. And since I had two Polaroids, I'm just going to do that again. One last thing I'm going to add to my shelf is a little mirror. So again, just hiding all of these. And first you want to just create a cylinder here. And you want to decrease the height. And this is going to be the base of our mirror. Now create another cylinder. This time you're going to decrease the radius so it's thinner like this. And just drag up the Y arrow. And just push it back like this. Now create another cylinder. And you want to decrease the height again. I made mine 0.05. And you want to go to these arrows and just change this first value to 90. Then you want to just drag this up and just push it back right here. And I'm just going to increase this angle a little more so it's tilted upwards. Now I'm going to duplicate this. And you want to just decrease the size a little bit and push it forward. Now to add your picture to this, just close out of element. Again, just have whatever picture you want to use. Make sure it fits your composition and pre-compose it. Hide the layer and link it to the custom layers. And go back to element and just add it the same way we've been doing this whole tutorial. If your picture looks weird like this, just go back to the cylinder model and change this middle value to 180. Now go to the cylinder under that, which should be the bigger cylinder, that's like the frame of the mirror. And just click duplicate and replace and reset. And it should be fixed. Now for the frame, I'm just going to use one of the presets from Element 3D. Just like that. And I think I'm just going to apply this to the rest of it. But that's all up to you. You can just change the color, do whatever you want with it. And again, just unhiding this so that you can place the mirror onto your shelf. Now you can just add some more things to this shelf. You can add more albums, more picture frames, more Polaroids, anything you want. You can leave it like this so it's just like a floating object here. Or if you want, you can add walls around it. So just create another cube and just decrease the third value and increase the scale so it's bigger than the shelf. And you want to just push it behind the shelf, of course. And you can just adjust the width and the height of it. Then just duplicate that. Go back to the arrows and rotate this middle value by 90. Then just drag it forward again and move it to the side. Then duplicate that and just change this first number, like do the whole opposite number thing to add a floor. Just duplicate this again, make this first value zero and make this zero again. Make this one 90 this time and just drag it down. And you should know by now how to add like the wallpaper or add color to these walls. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. Then just press okay. Now you can just add a camera layer. I usually like to create a null layer and control the camera with that, so just doing that. Make sure to make the null layer 3D. And to animate the camera, I'm just going to click P for position and separate these dimensions. Now I'm going to increase the Z position to zoom into the shelf. And you can just kind of follow along how I animate the camera here. 